Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment. You can listen to The Mike O'Mara Show at MikeO'MaraShow.com. Let's get started. It's The Mike O'Mara Show with Mike O'Mara, Oscar Santana, and Rob Spiewak. Now, here's Mike. I'm such a moron. How? Just fi- figuring things out, you know. But you did. Uh, like, we have a, um, when we moved into the garage, we have what's called a split, which is a uh, wall unit heater air conditioner and it's 48 degrees uh here in southwest florida in the oh that's right the worst winter we've ever had as far Mm. as like weather now this is the home of where you fly away because you want 80 degree temperatures and sunshine and all that delightful stuff and i'm here to tell you that uh, this ain't the winter to do it this is uh probably not the best time to come uh, for those of you who were disappointed at Christmas, eh, looking like if you come down in uh, you know late January, early February, you might. Uh, now, if this results in fewer people, it won't. But uh, they're Mike, all here. I'm, well, it's safe to change. predict, and it's safe to predict it'll be warm in the summer. <laughs> and um, and Mike, we're not having too bad of winter. You're you're okay up there? Yeah. Yeah. All right. I think I'll the let- belly button. Or what well, we wouldn't be the armpit. We'd be a skin tag on the U.S. The belly button would be right in the middle. It's funny you mention a dermatological situation today, since <laughs> yeah. I will be off to the dermatologist our, today. Our nation's capital may be, climate-wise, not South Carolina, but certainly not what it used to be. Well, also, it's weird, because we had one week weird. with one week had 80 degrees and then three inches of snow. Yeah, but even the snow was not was not the worst snow. It was, no, it was a to make snowballs snow. with. Yeah, it was, it was very nice. to talk about weather, but it's yeah. relevant to all of us. What is, and by the way, that, that split unit, I would not say that is blistering me with skin-melting hot air right takes, now. It takes some time. It does. It does? Yeah. Sure. And you know what? You've yeah, never even fired up the heat time. before. Let it I work have, for a second. Just, I don't think it's ever... Well, you've never felt it work. I have it on 86. Yeah, it'll take some time to get this. You'll be space. asleep by the time we finish the flip side. <laughs> Filled with carbon monoxide. Um, <laughs> Somebody wake weird. up, Mike. I'm such a. F- I'm, I'm, God, I can't even find the words. I'm such a Floridian when it comes to. Well, yeah, you, you've been there for almost a decade. Yeah. It's like 48 degrees, and uh, I walk the dog today, and I go out, and it's brisk. It's actually different and refreshing, yeah. and it's like. Bracing, and then as I continue to walk, I become older and older. <laughs> and by the time we get to the little dog park where Winslow is going to do uh, his business, I'm just going. <laughs> <laughs> and then I get in Carla's car because we have to keep the mileage <laughs> down. Yeah. My life is so pathetic. We have to keep the mileage down on my car because I don't want to have a big fat lease charge. And I'm not taking it back early because right. a listener told me they're going to screw me if they if I do that. Oh, they'll screw so, you regardless. Uh, I put on. All the, the the great wintry accoutrement on Carla's massive luxury vehicle uh, with heated seats, heated steering wheel. I put it on high yeah. in the front and the back of the uh, SUV. Yeah. And by the time we get to Michael's school, uh, we're practically in a sauna. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, it was delightful. And now I'm in here, and because I am, my blood is so thin, I am feeling this air. You're also 70 pounds lighter. You know, that makes a huge difference. I don't know whether it does because I oh, haven't been 70 it, pounds lighter. It does. It does. It does. Mm-hmm. And I, and I, uh, job one, any radio station I ever worked in, if I worked with a man large, of larger carriage, he was always, always hot. Yeah. <laughs> and I was always, always like, it is cold in here. How the hell are you hot? I, yeah. Uh, yeah. It now is. That's how you stay alert, Oscar. Worst uh, you know, times. <laughs> cold? Yeah. Or when I, you're uh, warm, warm lulls me to bed. Yeah, you got to stay. You got to be cold to be. That's why Letterman kept his studio at like 58. Freezing. Got yeah. Got it. Makes sense. Makes sense. I'm oh, having Matt? a Diet Coke because <laughs> I believe that uh, certain beverages go better Great. with uh, Thank our. You, Opening uh, review, food review yeah, segment. May, may we, I set this up, please? Oh, so it's a pairing. I'll turn it out. over to uh, Oscar Thank Santana you. for the. Uh, are we uh, well? What are we going to call it? Experiment review. What it, what it, what is this segment going to be referred to? This as is because? this is the world's greatest DJ excuse to eat fast food. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the world's greatest excuse to eat DJ fast food. Mac no. is so excited; he's stumbling all over the camera. There. 
I, for the better part of 30 years, have been a number one Big Mac full meal guy ever since I was a kid. Even when you could get kids meals, I'd ask for a Big Mac. And my dad would give me the double eyebrow and say, all right, sure, kid. I won't see you for another three months. Let's splurge. But no toy and then. You didn't get the toy in the house. I didn't care meal. about toys. I just wanted the Big Mac. Hey, look, it's Mac. Hi, Mac. And I got one. Look at him. It's right here. <laughs> uh, so when I heard that the double Big Mac was coming out, yeah. I, I tried to temper my excitement. We briefly touched it on this on the bonus show. And three weeks ago, we touched, it on the, on the, touched on it on the regular show. I said, when it comes out, I want Mike to be a part of this. I want Rod to be a part of this. I want the guys here on the show to be a part of this. And now we've got the double Big Mac. And as suggested, go ahead and open yours up, Mac. I know you're excited. As please put some ketchup on if you'd like. I don't know how you guys take yours. You're such a disc jockey, Rob, with the with the crinkling of the paper. <laughs> Mike, I mean, not, we have not a video everybody, component not now. Not everybody know? is watching the video. I know. Please, please use the, the napkins here. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't have any. I, I said any. they didn't include any. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead and take your bite, sir. Okay. I'll, uh, I'll continue. Set my it up. turn. Yes, yeah, Mike first. All right, here we go. I mean, it's, you know, it's a big the Mac. double Big Mac is as discussed a your regular Big Mac with two patties stacked of, of meat stacked on top of each other, were for where one patty was there before. And um, I take mine with ketchup, so I will put ketchup on mine as mm-hmm. we speak. I took mine <laughs> as offered. Yes, and, as and you I should. Will, and I will tell you, and all honesty, I'm not trying to make fake. Really, and I got it last night, and mm-hmm. I kept it in the fridge, <laughs> and then heated it up. It is yeah. really dry. <laughs> <laughs> now that's odd because I heard they were they were actually increasing the amount of sauce and maybe yeah, even a, altering a, the sauce. A, a well, saucier. this could be a lazy employee that you know that that jizzed it in the wrong part oh, of the no, sandwich. No, don't talk about that while we eat. <laughs> And that would actually not be a lazy employee. That would be a very active right, employee. Yeah, don't, why do you always have to one up me? Go ahead, man. And you wrecked it. Let me yeah. make the joke. Once in your <laughs> lifetime. God. Kill him. Okay, right. so oh. go ahead, go ahead, Mac. Go ahead, um, Mac, on your first bite review, if you don't mind. I'm getting on so microphone. Many right Get on microphone. Still chewing. Um, still chewing. Still chewing. <sighs> First off, not a big fan of the Big Mac. <laughs> Prefer the double cheeseburger. This is pretty good. Okay, all right. I all like right. the meat. It's just more meat, right, so more you. protein, and yeah. I like it. Mike, he likes the meat. Can I get a Celsius? Uh, look, sure. the meat flavor of yes. McDonald's beef, I mean, that is the key to the kingdom, right? Right. I never so, thought too much about the meat until now, so I'm excited. Uh, Rob, you go. I'll go. What last. is the caloric intake that I'm enjoying? Because I'm going to wreck my day. This has got to be like 1,100. Yeah, um, I'll say this: I warmed mine in a standard oven this morning, and the bread feels Panera hard. So I think that's going to be an issue, a la Mike's, with the dryness. But let okay. us see. Can I say something about the McDonald's Corporation as Rob Please. is eating his burger? Please. I'm going to tell you that this. The addictive properties of McDonald's food, which mm-hmm. uh, you know, I, I was I was going to come in here and take one bite, mm-hmm. and here I am. No, there is my sandwich. <laughs> You're halfway done. <laughs> I'm going to eat half of it. Do you know what I think here, Oscar? What's that? I think the McDonald's Corporation has landed on the golden ratio. Whoa! 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 I think, if anything, the Big Mac, and also not my go-to, have had quite a few in my day, but not my go-to, Yes, is a little light on the meat based on the fact that you have an extra half a bun in the middle, Agreed. Mm-hmm. all lettuce, and all that stuff going on, and that's Agreement. fine. Agreement. But, Even with the dry, I'm, yeah, I'm on your side on this one. This is a smart move. This, this is a will good, stay this is a on good the good burger, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I can only imagine the way it tasted fresh. Okay. You know what I mean? Yes. Jackson? So, so you're giving it a full, like, yeah. a, sign, a Spiwak sign-off. Yeah. Big, it is big so growing on me. As I, I can't <laughs> stop eating it. 
I can't. I know it's McDonald's. They don't need our help. <laughs> it is so good. Mm-hmm. It is so effing good. I'm sorry. It is. The oh. ratio. Rob, Rob is a foodie, and he nailed the review. It's the ratio. I just hit a pickle. What they've a taken, joy. They've taken what I considered an overrated product, mm-hmm. and they, they, they made it sing. Yeah. The four patties. Now, you could probably... I don't think it would work if you took two quarter pounder uh, burgers and put no, it on too that. wide. It too works wide. with the, the skinny little pile on top. It's, I love it. You know, what would, go, Mike, you know what would go good with this <laughs> is a fruit fritter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to get the, I need the calories because I literally will not be able to eat anything for the rest of the day. All right. Hold on. <laughs> Make it I'm, last. I, I'm gonna try now. You're gonna have to. I don't give a shit. <laughs> Rob, it's all the calm is all yours. I'm gonna all jump right. in now. All right, please. I think that's the first it's time Mike so has good. ever cussed with a mouthful of food. I think that was Rob. Exciting. It is so delicious. It really is because it's not overburdened with all that goo. Yeah, I think you're right. I think that's the problem. It's you know what, fast food lettuce is usually a problem. Because I knew there was a chance that this would happen, but I've what? done it. I can't. I, I'm eating it. I can't it. stop I'm eating, eating it. I can't stop, I can't re- stop eating it. <laughs> it's really good. It is. It, so what is your is take, really Oscar? With, and Oscar took it with extra ketchup. Where did Mac go? Back he passed to the away. producer room. Um, <laughs> Mac is choking. Guys. I'm going to have what, to stop. What? Thinking about it. That's how good it is. I'm going to have to prevent myself from the rest of the week not (laughs) rolling into McDonald's and getting another one. (laughs) What I. What was your approach to purchasing the Big Mac? Because I picked mine up exactly at 9 30 p.m. last night so it could be. I was about an hour. The the shortest uh, amount of window. About an hour ahead of you. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Okay. I got mine this morning at 7 30. Thank you for the reminder. Rob sent out a thing. Don't forget Burger Day. And I, you know, and and I did the Napoleon. I Mike, you're going to be night. tickled to death when I tell you it only has 780 calories. You're so you're already me. winning. You're already winning. Winning. Uh, 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 add it. <laughs> no, I didn't. No. I didn't come in here expecting a rave. I'm sorry. It's fan-effing-tastic. Win-win. And as you said, I can't. <laughs> what? I can't imagine what it must be like fresh. Yeah. We're having them reheated, all of them. It's, uh, I imagine I'll know what it tastes. I think I'll know what it tastes like fresh this afternoon. Oh, that! Oh, God! When I go back. <laughs> oh, you're gonna go back? Oh, I thought you were making a poop joke. No, Mike. How no. dare you? It's not always that. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's the golden ratio. That is. This is really good. It's the ratio. It's the mm-hmm. ratio. You have that. It, the McDonald's uh, original Big Mac, as popular as it's been over the years, was not. Had to. Uh, it, it was improved. They improved uh-huh. it. They did. Are Here, we now hail listen, to thee, I, Ray Kroc? I I haven't uh, I haven't read anything. Are they getting positive I, reviews on it, or have you read any other reviews? So I talked to uh, her name was Christina in Spanish last night when I ordered it because I was the only person in the McDonald's. Did you go to our McDonald's? McDonald's in our building? Yeah, I drove yeah. back to work. Um and. I said, uh, yeah, are these uh, a lot of people ordering these? She goes, no. <laughs> um, yeah, they're not. It, it's too good. Mickey D's will mess it up. They won't. They well, won't. Well, no, it. they're but promoting it. It's me, on it's... every billboard in front of her. She goes, it, uh, it's in which means it just came out. It's but uh, also, yeah, doesn't so... it seem? I mean, they've got it. They've got signage at the store. Yeah, but it seems under marketed, say on television. It's I'm not so seeing it. Good. Yeah, I don't see enough commercials on television. They it's need, so good. They should use this as their commercial. Okay, this two burgers cost in the city, uh, I think fourteen dollars. Two of these double Big Macs, right? So seven, a seven dollar burger, right? That's what I think I paid. Yeah. Um, and what's a Five Guys burger cost? Mm. Like ten bucks, twelve Probably bucks, probably twelve. Twelve bucks, right? Twelve dollars mm-hmm. for a okay. Burger. You're getting wow. a five guys like deluxe 
burger with the golden ratio, and I'm, I'm starting to agree with Rob. I thought he was overselling it, but he's right. No, he's mm-hmm. not. No, I, he was, he's honest when it comes to food. He won't conjure when it comes. No, to No, no, this is this is. I just I was hesitant. Yeah, because because again, this is my go- calories, Rob. Yes. This is my, this is my yep. go-to. <laughs> okay, let me see what I have for my day now. Hold on, I'm just going to go back and check what I have. You can have That's another one, Mike. I, I can. <gasps> yeah, I could wait all day. <laughs> 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 there is a uh, an eighty five percent chance. Yes, that, that you'll that think will about happen this. today. And, that, and, you, and you'll so say satisfied. you'll say your your kid be like, "Hey, do you want to have one of the greatest burgers yeah. of all?" Yeah. Time? <laughs> I am I am picking my son up this afternoon at four thirty. Yes, I will not eat until then, and then I will say, "Hey, would you like to go to McDonald's, Michael?" <laughs> Bam, <laughs> boom, bam, as you said. Yes. Oscar, thank you for bringing this yeah. uh, little tip to a yeah, I big win. One of the, big win one of for the better. Yeah, be, look, I think it's more engaging if you ta- if you taste test something and you go, oh my god, what are they doing? Mm. No, this one, th- there's just a. Did you? Is that why you brought this to us? Because you were so satisfied by this? I hadn't had it. You just, I wanted but all you, of us. But it all intrigued of us, you. It intrigued me, and I, it was something that I knew the three of us could do. What do yeah. you think? Well, what's your review now? So my review is one. Mike, thank you for not pulling a Ben and Jerry's and actually eating the ice cream before we taste test the ice cream. Which is what Oscar's biggest mm-hmm. concern was. Yeah, not medicine, just you, but modern me. medicine prevents. God from bless you. Yeah. That. Well, uh, whatever's whatever's happening has definitely worked because. <laughs> We were, we so were just temp- like I tell people when I do the commercial. It's weight loss with no sit-ups. That's what's <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> remember, wait till 4.30 and you're good to go. <laughs> That's the new model. I, I am so pleased. It's, it's just, it's, I, use, I, in the past when I was younger, I would just have a Big Mac and one Big Mac would not satiate me. I'd have to have the large fries and the Diet Coke. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This Big Mac alone, which I didn't get fries with, yep. just the sandwich speaks for itself a day later. It's a day later, and the sandwich still holds up. The yep. burger and still the holds fries, up. Let's be honest, yeah. and I can say, because I have been on this program yes. for a year, that your French fries are your tummy fat bomb. That's what, if you yep. want to oh, know. I didn't know if that. You I know didn't know that. The, well, I mean, the whole thing can be bad, okay. obviously. Yeah. Fast food. You don't want to eat this every day. Yeah, I, but you can. You eat just the Sammy, and you're going to be, you, you know, it's what Rob said. Uh, we were both very surprised at that. Yeah. But if you load up a, a large fry, mm-hmm. at, at least in my world, that yes. takes me over. Well, look it up, Rob. What's a, what's a, I can do it right now. A large fry. Well, I, well the, it's not the, so much the large yeah, fry. Let, it's let's, also let, the... Uh, let's put the calories aside for two seconds. <laughs> All right. Okay. For two <laughs> Hard for me to do yeah, in yeah. the current I, situation. I, I, I get that. I get that. Mm-hmm. I'm saying that the meal which satiated me when I was a younger man. Right. The sandwich is so good. I'm yeah. sorry. This burger is so good. This new Big Mac, the double Big Mac is so good. Just the double Big Mac a day later is completely satiating. I, so I, I can't feel. imagine being in the restaurant and getting the fries and the double Big Mac. That's a win, 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 win. Well, yeah. you might, that, that's, so, that's a lot of food. That is a lot of food. <laughs> yeah, especially and- if you add like a chocolate sundae and some <laughs> apple pies. <laughs> That's a lot of food. Now you're now you're making to. me want to throw up. You are uh, with that. But uh, look, I think that, and it's just a, it is a food satisfaction bomb, in yes. my opinion. So good. It goes Great right golden into ratio. The Fantastic. All the things you would love about nice a big and Mac, even doubled, re- and, and redoubled. Yeah. And by the way, when you order this, uh, oh dear, when you order this sandwich, this burger. My my vision was, <laughs> I swear to God, when Oscar tasked us all with, <laughs> with grabbing this, I expect <laughs> I expected I was going to get a box that was that a mile high, high? You know? like a top hat box because yeah. these microscopic patties that they yeah. put on their yeah. regular cheeseburgers are teeny tiny. So right. it's just a you know it's a good thing. And now I've got Diet Coke and something I don't eat before midnight. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, well, America. Oscar, know that that burp is that, a big thumbs up. Yeah. It's, a, it's the burp. Well, in certain cultures, it's a sign of telling the chef that they've provided a great meal. Yeah. 
You should go the, burp at your McDonald's and let them know they did a good that job. Culture. Yeah. And they, by the way, they were fantastic last night. I I went into the drive-through and I said, "Double Big Mac, that's it." And she go, "This was the exchange. No, this is how little verbiage was used." All right, so it came on. I'll do the whole thing. For okay, you. please. All right, I'll do the whole thing for you right now. This is exactly what happened. Mike pulls into his McDonald's. What kind of McDonald's? What can I get you? Double Big Mac. That's it. Second window. Boom! <laughs> I got what a they question know. always makes me feel bad is I said uh, double Big Mac and they said sandwich only and I said yes, see? sandwich that's a, only. Yes, I got no all. no burden yeah. of upselling. Yeah, yeah. And by the way, I, have they moved away from the automated uh, recording that always says, "Will you be using our app today?" Which is, I have never yeah, installed gone. a McDonald's app on my That's phone. Gone. No, no I, but it, it does I did pay get, you back. Move up that, to the second window, please. <laughs> Oscar says it does pay. The you app back. It does. It does. Let's go to our regular uh, Mac uh, McDonald's user of the app. <laughs> Mac, go ahead. Yes. Yeah, so the app <laughs> constantly has deals where I can get a double cheeseburger and six beat, six beat nuggets for like three bucks. Want to start again with that? Because it sounded like you said six yeah. beats nuggets. <laughs> no, yeah, uh, I mean they constantly have different things you can get Dr. for much Dre's lower beats price. <laughs> One thing I will find for, from finding out on the app is that fries cost like a large fry costs like five dollars, and a large drink costs the same as a medium. Never get a medium drink. Always get a large. It is the exact same price. Okay. All right. So you're telling. You tell me it's worth it. <laughs> Mac, uh, we didn't get your review of the uh, of the sandwich. What do you think? Oh, it's great. Yeah, I, 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 I like I said, I said this earlier, but I'm not a fan of the before, before the experiment. Have you had one? No. Okay. No, I have not. I've actually only had two Big Macs in my life. You're not a bit. You don't this, like the uh, special sauce. I do. Oh, you do. I, I, I asked for the special sauce on a double cheeseburger. Really? So you know what he yeah. hates, Mike? The boy hates lettuce. I don't like lettuce. Yeah, got to be. Well, I mean... And I don't like that bread in the middle, either. In a land long ago, far, far away, Rob and I had a discussion about shredded lettuce that went on and on and on. <laughs> yeah, and it was almost a whole show. I, you look, <laughs> I've talked to people that prefer shredded lettuce. I think shredded lettuce is horrible. I think the shredded lettuce was designed to stretch lettuce. Yes, I like of a, course. I like a leaf of lettuce on anything. If it's lettuce, put a leaf of lettuce. Don't give me the shredded stuff. And the worst example... Of shredded lettuce would be if you get it on a Jersey Mike sub. It's like getting an, you know, you're not getting a sandwich, you're getting an Easter basket. And <laughs> I don't care for it. So I don't know, anyhow. Mike. I think mm -hmm. that the uh, shredded lettuce is at most acceptable on a Jersey Mike sub because if you get the oil and vinegar, you need the lettuce to hold it in. No, you don't. It's, no, it's, it's structurally, it's part of it. It's I not, think it I is. Can't stand but you might it. get, do you get mayonnaise or do you get oil and vinegar? I get mayo and, uh, and well, why are we moving into another fast? So has could anybody be ever, has anybody ever, I don't think in my life have I ever not eaten, I have never consumed the McDonald's within a good, at least an hour window of purchasing it. This is the first time I've ever had something overnight sitting in the fridge. The, yeah, the fries, of course, right. would not hold up, but the, but the burger did fine in the refrigerator yeah. Yeah. overnight. Mm -hmm. I'm very, yeah. very yeah, what Did you get a, an emergency quarter pounder mm -mm. to cut the, to knock the edge off, Rob? That, no, oh, I, oh, got, Rob. I got an emergency double cheeseburger, so Mac okay. would be proud. Yeah. Got it. Oh, so you, you did, when you got, went to get yours, you got another sandwich. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, the, the old me would have. The old me yeah. could not have driven through that drive through to buy a product to hold in the refrigerator overnight at 8.30 at night. It wouldn't have happened. And I got the text from you. I don't know what time you sent it out. Around 8. Right around 8. I'm like, yeah. I, I do the Napoleon. You know, it's but funny I, but when I people... I wanted to, to be part of this, so I had to go out and people, grab it. People say that one of the weaknesses of texting is it doesn't carry attitude or intent. It's very <laughs> cold. But when Mike said, and I believe the text I'm was... Get it. I'll bring up the thread. I'll bring up There the was thread. one sentence that you said that made me say, oh, he is not happy right now. It was so clear to me when you wrote, do I just ask for a four patty Big Mac? I'm going to run out now. And that was at 8, 12 p.m. I said, oh, he is not happy. Yeah. What do I ask for? <laughs> How do I get it? The <laughs> valid question. It was, it was. Uh, it was. And then two responses right away. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Yeah. So uh, let's see. 
8.30 a.m. tomorrow, please, please uh, see you then. Uh, and don't forget, Oscar writes at 8.08, mm-hmm. don't forget about the Big Mac four patty taste test tomorrow. That's what you should have called it at the beginning. It sounded bigger. The Big Bet, the Big, the four patty, the Big Mac four patty taste test. <laughs> um, 8.30 a.m. tomorrow, please, please. I said, see you then. And then I read that at 8.08 and I go, <sighs> <laughs> what were you doing when you got the text? Were you viewing your computer? My were you were watch her? My feet were up, and I had just turned on. Uh, well, I'll give my TV reco since we have time in the opening. Yeah. I had just turned on Griselda on Netflix. And I've seen a lot of ads for instantaneous it. Instantaneous yeah. like. It has not disappointed me one iota since. I am on, uh, am I at the conclusion? I think I made it halfway through the uh, second episode, and... She's just talented. She's got talent coming out of Sophia her. Sophia Vergara. She's gorgeous. I said, do I just ask for the four patty Big Mac? I'm going to run out now. <laughs> and then Mac immediately, because he, he knows and cares, double Big Mac. <laughs> and I did. Yeah. And it worked. You can eat. Uh, and then Rob says, ask for a double Big Mac. And it's uh, it, Rob with... with Rob, this is why we always tell Rob, cut down copy, because Rob says, ask for a double Big Mac, and it is it is on the menu. You'll see it in the drive-thru. Thank you for adding two sentences that were completely <laughs> My apologies for helping out. <laughs> no, Mac just wrote, double Big Mac. Mm-hmm. That was you all see, the information but you would I be needed. Equal, you know you what? are overly verbose. You always have been. Sometimes, if you, someone were to say something short, you would say, that's it? That's all you say? That's You're it. Probably more? right. My history yeah. uh, with text communications, probably. But I was just uh, in this particular circumstance. You have to give the nod to Mac for efficiency. Do you not? I agree. Well, this is what happens when you live on the McDonald's app. You understand how to communicate the <laughs> he product. Knows exactly what we're going to exactly. Uh, get. So, Oscar, you've downed a good chunk of yours now. I'm done. Yeah, you're done. Uh, and you give it a thumbs up as well. This will be uh, you're the big Mac guy. You uh, love them anyway. Uh, improved or not improved? From the improved. Uh, original, yeah. Oh, way my, improved. My, my logic was, if you're going to take your family out and they're five, you're a five guys with this premium burger family. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Save some cash and take them to get a double Big Mac. Um, if I can just, uh, and so the, the uh, overwhelming review is positive from the yes. Michael Mara show. It's a premium all, burger now. All thumbs up. <laughs> all thumbs up from the sorry i got it's the diet coke my I god yeah I, uh, mac, okay. may i please have another celsius please and, and, and some napkins or what absolutely naps, and the paddles um well I'm, i could i could eat another one of these i, I, not, I would not stop me. oh yeah i yeah. have to say something i do not eat like this anymore and so it is a very mm, uh just bear with me for the rest of the show oh my god God knows what uh you know terzipatide will be doing during this segment but uh, i will say this speaking about uh the new sir uh sofia vergara project uh griselda on netflix it is griselda blanco right that's a, griselda a biopic blanco, notorious uh drug dealing yeah. uh cartel it means, head it means white griselda she well that's her name was griselda yeah, so, blanco last name uh oh. blanco was her last name this um when i say she's talented narcos was i think the gold standard for uh for providing content uh, fully bilingual, where you would get just as much, if not more, Spanish speaking yeah. than you would get mm-hmm. with great subtitling and subtitling that's done so efficiently and so uh, beautifully that that it's easy to follow along for non-Spanish speakers. And they have picked up on this with uh, Griselda and a fluent Spanish speaker from Colombia, Sofia Vergara. And there's old Medellin. That's where it starts, yeah, Oscar. I know. You know, it's tough. And I tough will for, ju- for my new home base. She is. <laughs> she. Is, it, this is like so many comic actresses that I think if you have the ability to uh, do comedy, you usually have no problem slipping into drama. And she is. She creates already. And I, I look. I hope it lasts. I hope she sustains it. She creates already without her actions. Just her acting, mm-hmm. a sinister quality that is phenomenal. I mean, that's yeah. how good I think she is in this. She creates that, and I am all in. And then 
as a dude who loves Sofia Vergara for the reason a lot of dudes do, she still has that just natural beauty that comes yeah. through, but she's not playing a beauty queen anymore or the uh you know the the eye candy for Ed O'Neill. She is playing a kingpin and she you is You mentioned did she have like does she wear like a prosthetic she has, nose or she something? She appears to have if we get Mac, can we get a picture of Griselda up there? There should be yeah, a the, cover page. The new one from Netflix. Netflix. And then if if we can do that, I can show you what I'm talking about, okay. which appears to be prosthetic uh nose makeup that she wears. Very subtle, but subtle uh but but noticeable. Where you look in that, well, that's not really that you have to do a double take. Yeah. Which is the best kind of makeup in the that world is, where you go, yeah. is that really Sof uh, Sophia Vergara? And Sophia Vergara is uh is great. I, I just cannot wait to watch this story develop because she's so engaging so it's a limited there I am. series i'm, I'm guessing like, i haven't only, i've only seen an episode and a half that's i'm it. guessing eight episodes probably i don't know i don't even know what I, about I true detective so oh, you look see at that so there she is oh yeah she does she doesn't look like sophia for and you know what so often oh. they will take these that might uh, be the nose from maestro with bradley cooper you mean <laughs> He had the prosthetic nose makeup. Did he? Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah. did he? Oh, yeah. Oh, it okay. was a big deal. It was a big yeah. deal, yeah. But this is uh, it's great. I, I, yeah. I think it's fantastic, and I think she does a uh, great job. I'm looking forward to watching them all. I'll binge them. They, uh, she's really, really, really talented. So uh, onward and upward for Do her. But great transition into uh, something she's not done Good before. for her. I love it. Yeah. Do yes. you? I will check it out. I've been holding out. But I, I'm all caught up on True Detective, three episodes in, with Jodie Foster. Interesting, past right? Season. A little weird. Weird is the is, is an the understatement. understatement. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. Supernatural meets uh, true crime detective stuff. It's a uh, you can't pigeonhole it, can you? You can't really pigeonhole what's this going on. This is the third season of True Detective, right? The I have third no idea. iteration. I know Woody Harrelson, and uh, there was a previous incarnation. I don't know if this is third or fourth. Do they I have, no have idea. they addressed the supernatural in the past, or is this a new? No, this for is them? this is this in pretty fairness, rarefied air for no, that the, show. The okay. one, the one season where they had the voodoo in Louisiana. Yeah, mm -hmm. that was Matthew McConaughey and uh, and Woody Harrelson. I think. Yes, but the, but there is a voodoo aspect to this. The There's, same, and here's where True Detective uh, lasts as a devil franchise. worshiping. I think that what you get, Oscar, with this is uh, the one common thread that all these miniseries have had, just really scary. Just really, yeah. really scary. Really manages can't to... Can't watch it with your... your, your I, I, if you got a 13-year-old that's jumping, you can't watch it with them. They will don't freak want the F out. It is freaky. Is it scarier freaky. than uh, Jodie Foster and Nyad? When when you watch it, Rob, it'll be so un, un like un off putting to you that I you will probably you'll probably stop watching. I'll it. probably not like it. Yeah, why would like it be off putting to Rob? I'm curious. As soon about as that. he sees the scene in the frozen tundra of you know the, that scene of somebody mm -hmm. essentially yeah try spoiler alert. No, no, there's there's, there's multiple scenes. Yeah, but this one scene. And then the, the closing ice, scene, right? And Where then the ice skating yeah. rink. Yeah, yeah, it's just. Oh, yeah. No. you're that, probably that's, right, Oscar. That's I don't, when he's going to say, like, "What's on Turner Classic Movies?" I don't like the unpleasant. Sometimes I do. I don't know. I'll give it a shot. What's the, what, what, Do you do you ever go for like just besides the classics? And don't mention any classics here. But All do right. you like a good horror movie? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. I, um, like What's the a, most recent suspenseful thriller you think you love? Oh God, I that's a, that's a tough question. Um, a a feature you, film, not a series. I'll tell you this: um, anytime I see it, I will always stop on uh, the Jodie Foster. What? Uh, why Silence of the Lambs. Yeah, I will always stop on. Yeah, that. it's a phenomenal. I think film. that's a brilliant film. It's so mm -hmm. well done. Yeah, and, Oscar uh, yeah, winning uh, horror movie. Which a is suspense movies. Yeah, you know what? That's a, that's a good thing for me. Suspense, mystery, all that stuff. I like that. I like the darkness, but the unpleasantness, the outward unpleasantness, sometimes is off putting. So you're probably uh, right, Oscar. We'll see. Listen, we have to go to break, but I will tell you this: that um, we, you know, I know that I'm responsible for selling certain products on this show. So uh, right? please, you don't need to. 
keep this in your memory banks, but uh, let's go to break right now. And uh, I just want to share with the guys that uh, there's a reasonable chance I'm going to throw up before the end of the uh, show. Uh, Stay right. tuned. Uh, I, I am telling you, it's like, oh, God. oh my God, the bomb has just dropped. <laughs> the fuse is lit. That's just a lot of calories that I'm not used to eating at one time. We'll be right back. <laughs> hey. Don't reinvent yourself in 2024. Just rehydrate yourself with Liquid IV. Uh, Liquid IV hydrates two times faster than water alone, all in a single delicious stick. I was playing golf with a buddy of mine over the weekend, and I gave him a, a stick because I keep my golf bag loaded with the stuff. Yeah. And uh, it was instant love because of the flavor. No sugar, by the way. No artificial sweeteners. You can feel like a hydrated new you ready to take on 2024. Liquid IV has three times the electrolytes of the leading sports drinks, plus eight vitamins and nutrients for everyday wellness, and it tastes so good. And it's so easy. By the way, if you really want to stack Liquid IV up against other sports drinks, yeah. the flavor to me is vastly superior. It really is. Just add it to your water bottle, shake it up and go. Try white peach, green grape, or my favorite lemon lime. That's what's in the golf bag. I love them all, and you will too. Make it a Liquid IV 2024 and be the best that you can be. Rehydrate yourself for the new year. Grab your Liquid IV Hydration Multiplier sugar-free in bulk nationwide at Costco or get 20% off your first order when you go to liquidiv.com and use our code TMOS at checkout. Oh, look, the Kraken is throwing up. Look at that. <laughs> look. I want to be clear. The only reason Mike feels nauseous is because of his he's weight on loss meds. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, it's not that uh, yeah, it's not because of the food. It's just I it's the feeling of fullness you get from yeah. this stuff. So when you're really full, uh, you know, uh, let me just say, uh, remember that 85%? I'll yeah. get it at 4.30 this afternoon. Uh, it's gone to 30 right now. It's gone What's to 30%. The, did you ever use Chantix? Did any of you ever use Chantix? You mean the cigarette smoking? Uh, it was yeah, a smoking yeah. one, right? Yeah. Carla, Carla did. I never did. I, I never had trouble uh, quitting smoking. So, the way uh, I understand Chantix worked was in a, in a similar way where it basically would make you feel nauseous. nauseous. if you were going to yeah. smoke a cigarette. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And it gave right? you horrible nightmares, too. But for this is for on. food. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it no, it's it's they not have pills sick. like that for alcohol no? as well. Overwhelmingly yeah. full, like okay. like yeah. really like. And at eight thirty, when you know the uh, odds, I eat usually rarely before eleven a.m. every day. Oh, that's what I do. Wow, so wow. this is uh, the, and I, and I ate my protein bars prior to coming in here. So I'm going. <laughs> uh, let's begin, shall we? Um, I don't know if you have this or not, Rob, but it was a biggie. Kanye West yes. lost it on a, a TV reporter. Yeah, a he TMZ seems reporter. so nice. I don't understand this. He's out of his gore. He's such a bully prick. Uh, I know. He snatched her phone. It all started. Uh, do you have this, by the way? I do. I do have the audio, if you like. It all. Oh, the audio. I don't want the audio. I want the video. So if you don't have the video, don't worry about it. All right. Uh, it all started with a report claiming that uh, Kanye had banned his wife Bianca uh, Bianca Sensori from social media, supposedly mm -hmm. for her own protection. Yesterday, Kanye's walking down Hollywood Boulevard on his way to the Walk of Fame ceremony for singer Charlie Wilson, and the reporter asked Kanye if his wife has free will. Kanye grabbed her phone away from her and started cussing her out. He repeatedly called the question, dumbass S, and uh, also referred to himself as a legend and a grown-ass superhero. Now, there are two videos out there, one from the reporter's perspective where you hear the audio, and then there's another one that was just uh, shot by another TMZ person that has a great view of that. I really wish, guys, we'd be on stuff like that and have it because it really would be great to see that because Can you I get hear the whole thing. What we, what we have just to get that one perspective? You can hear, I, I, okay. I have no right, perspective play, on and, that. Yeah, I just don't know why we don't have the uh, video, but go ahead, play the, hey, uh, play the clip. Hey, People want to know if Bianca has her free will. Some people are saying you're controlling her. Would you think that you a white woman you could walk up on me like that and ask me some stuff? Grabs her like phone that? and then you're seeing ask it you pointed at the woman, ground. Like, does she got free will? Are you crazy? You ain't saying this America. You got free will? You running for TMZ coming in? I'm a legend. You understand that? I'm here to support Charlie Wilson. You come ask me some dumb about right, my wife. It. You can kill yeah. that. Uh, Charlie Wilson. So he berated her. He was at a uh, Hall of Fame thing, Walk of oh, Fame got it, got it. Uh, thing for Charlie Wilson. Uh, Kanye berated her for over three minutes before offering to pay her twice what she makes from TMZ. He's just a 
dick. And the whole he time is. he did it, he was in a full face covered uh, mask. Yeah. It was just, it was weird. Just, the whole I'm thing tired was weird. crap. I really am. I'm tired of him getting away with that. That was just, look, you're a celebrity. You're walking out on the street. People are, you know, it happens to every every large scale celebrity. Well, he's, and, he, this you know. isn't new news. This is also another, um, oh, God. It's a, it's, it's another vague and, and like secondary verification that his mental health is not correct. Right. Yeah, right. that's true, yeah. Oscar. And, yeah. Uh, right? You know, yeah, and I don't know which is more significant, the fact that he w- grabs the phone and raves out on her or the fact that he's wearing a full-fledged, I've, like, Moomenschantz mask. The, the mask <laughs> all the time, just it's just so confusing to me. So well, he's stupid. a superhero, Mike. He's a... <laughs> I, I'm a boy. That that just really, yeah. You know, this is the the look. Are they bottom feeders? The TMZ people. There sure. are no greater bottom feeders in our society than those paparazzi people for TMZ. They're scumbags. But at the same time, what do you do? You're a celebrity. You know the book. You know how to handle it. That's yeah. the price you pay. Yeah. Time. You walk. You keep walking. You don't do what you did. And he makes that kind of bottom feeder look sympathetic. Which blew me away. I couldn't yeah. believe that. Uh, ever since the Chiefs punched their ticket to the Super Bowl on Sunday, there's been talk that Taylor Swift might join Usher during the halftime show. According to the aforementioned TMZ, uh, this ain't happening. Taylor will not be performing in any capacity. I didn't think she would. No. Uh, she'll just be there as a fan if she gets there to uh, cheer on Travis Kelsey. Now there's a rumor going around that Taylor won't even make it to Vegas, which is plausible if she's going to be in Japan. Uh, she's doing last of uh, four straight shows in Tokyo the night before the game. Uh, Tokyo, 17 hours ahead of Vegas. So when the concert ends, it'll probably be around 5 or 6 a.m. Saturday, Vegas time. So that's, you know, a day to get there. Yeah. It only takes about 11 or 12 hours to fly from Tokyo to Vegas, especially if you're doing it private. So there's no issue with Taylor getting there. She'll even have all of Saturday night to rest up before the game. I love people talking like, yeah, like they're her parent or something. Yeah. Get some we rest, dear. Have you, have you churn, has, has either of you churned your, uh, not anger, but you Turned on her a little t- bit? No, no, not, you were kind of, uh, and not, you're not, this is not unique to most football fans, yeah. unfortunately, right now. Mm-hmm. They're like, all right, make it about the game, not about the celebrity. I, I, I felt that way until I saw what appeared to be, and maybe I'm gullible, to Crazy kids in love. They're in after, love after the game, yes. and then I went from feeling like it's not. I'm not. I have no bone to pick with Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift. Yes, they're negotiating this very unusual romance the best way they can. My issue is with the constant shots of her in the stands, yeah. which I think have contributed to this negative fan yeah. reaction that they're getting and I, including me where i was saying okay enough that was not directed at taylor swift and travis no. kelsey that was directed the broadcast at, at the bro- yeah. okay enough yeah. please let when they had that little moment and she's down there all kind of uh you know uh disheveled from uh jumping up and down and running and he gives her that hug that is a legitimate i love you hug and a great moment and i think that I might be like a lot of other people where I kind of hope it works for them with all yeah. the uh, stuff. Yeah, they I don't blame them. them either. I do feel that the the only sinister thing at play is the way the networks are exploiting it. Okay. And I also feel the NFL is probably making, you could certainly urge them to show yeah. a little Taylor Swift. It's, sure. it's, been, yeah. it's been quantified in the dollars that she's generated, the uh, revenue she's generated for the NFL. Right. Uh, this was in Bloomberg. Quantifiable. 343. Uh, well, uh, yeah, somebody's quant. Somebody's done the done the, the math. Right. They say mm-hmm. that they an earned media, just sheer attention, which then turned into uh, women purchasing, you know, jer- Chiefs jerseys, jerseys yeah. anything. Three hundred forty three million dollars in earned media this season. Isn't that amazing? That's one figure. The second is, and this comes second hand, and I shall not name the source. Okay. And this is where Mike probably turns on everybody, America is we had a theory on how much or how Taylor Swift and their a crew acquire a luxury box in oh, yeah, any yeah, stadium yeah. in America. Okay. Yeah. And I had thought, you know, and walked through, with, you know, the logic that, okay, is it Capital One or is right. it Visa that's going to just get her the box because they probably have a box in every stadium in the country. Right. 
or is she actually paying for these? Okay. And then I secondhand heard that from a friend, and this is not, this again is all alleged. Okay. But it you makes don't know sense. 100%, but it might be. I know the friend that his law firm has a box at MT Stadium. And multiple law firms do as law firms yeah. would, Mike. You know that. Mm-hmm. And a memo went out from Taylor Swift's camp, not directly, but through that camp, that said if anyone is willing to give up their box for the Swift camp, uh, there was a half a million dollar bounty on it. That doesn't, I mean, I, I can see that being plausible. Yeah. Right? Okay. A half a million dollars could buy you not just a season, but maybe a couple seasons depending on the uh, depending on the, the actual franchise. Mm-hmm. So do you For think it's one BS? game, what do you do, Mike O'Mara? You own that box. In a heartbeat, I sell it. Yeah. But but you're but you're a fan. You're a diehard fan of no, the Ravens. No team that is uh, that valuable to me. Okay. <laughs> Especially when I can see the results. Yeah. Fair, fair, fair. Does Being the half there, million dollars does it include touchdown brownies? <laughs> <laughs> what are touchdown brownies? That's that is something a, that, that Sonny Jurgensen Sonny Jurgensen always used to talk about. <laughs> touchdown brownie. I want to thank Sarah Whatever from Blake for the touchdown brownies. Delicious touchdown brownies. Because because I, I do it. You're you're okay. Maybe Red Sox. The Red mm-hmm. Sox. Would you say? Would you if you were if we lived in Boston at a championship game and uh, you know uh, the, look. I think that it's the, as your favorite term, juice worth the squeeze. If you're yes. talking about something that cost you uh, $30,000. 200K, 200K. Maybe 200K yeah. if it's, but I don't, and you get one opportunity to eradicate that just by having Swifty and then tell your friends that she uh, came. I think, why not? Go for also, it. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? Do you think it's true? Um, I wanted to believe that it wasn't yeah. until. I started digging a little further, and I was like, oh, this has happened many of times where they have bought, not they, but the Mahomes and the whole, and the whole like, the, the, the Chiefs. For a, for a suite. But, but because they're, moved, they're going to another stadium. It's on a regular basis this happens. So the big money people come in and just pay for it. They just pay for it. Yeah. yeah. I bet the guy who sold the box for 500000 still got to go, though. One ticket for him. Yeah, probably. And, and, yeah, and then, yeah, you know. I mean, that that makes it even or better. Or if you got a kid, be game. like, "Hey, you guys can have this, but I got to be there with my daughter because yeah. right. she's got to meet the yeah, like, whatever sure. it is." Wouldn't you love to know? I'd love to know. Yeah, that. that's like I'd that's just the pure uh, fanboy curiosity of me to you know to see uh, whether that would happen or not. I I think it's uh, very plausible, and yeah. uh, you know, what could they do with that money though, man? How many lotto tickets could you buy? <laughs> <laughs> um, Moving right along, you can watch that uh, documentary, The uh, Greatest Night in Pop, on Netflix now. Uh, here are 10 facts. Uh, this might spoil it, but I, I think it's interesting. 10 facts about that night uh, that might whet your appetite. Number one, Harry Belafonte started it all. Uh, number two, Michael Jackson and Lionel Richie avoided any dated expressions when they wrote the song. You know, like, right on or yo dog. They wanted to make sure the lyrics were timeless. And that is clever. That, that sense of history to uh, yeah, know we are the guy. world. Uh, yeah. Number three, it was recorded after the 1985 American Music Awards. That's how they got everybody there. I always Prince, thought it was the Grammys. That's surprising to me. So American it's good, Music though. Awards. Prince was supposed to be there, but he no showed. Uh, people seem to think it was because of his rivalry with Michael Jackson, and also it just didn't fit his brand. Uh, he was at a Mexican restaurant. <laughs> I Naturally, love facts like that when it all went down. Number five, uh, my favorite fact out of the whole story here: Madonna. Not invited. Apparently, some of the organizers felt she wasn't a good enough singer. Oh. Wow. Uh, well, if this is 1985, mm-hmm. she was. She had not yet become the pop icon. So, right. yeah, I can see that. They went wow. with Cindy Lauper instead. Sources say it broke Madonna's heart that they didn't oh, include her on that. Oh, that's sad. Uh, number six, uh, you might wonder why Dan Aykroyd was there. Well, he took part in it by accident. He just happened to be talking to a talent manager that day, and the guy invited him to the recording session. And that's how Dan Aykroyd showed up, Bassomatic, at the uh, That's great. At the joint. Uh, here's This is Bob Dylan was there, and he yeah. almost had a nervous breakdown. He got all stressed out trying to figure out how to sing his part. 
when all they wanted for him to do was Dylan. You know, they just wanted yeah. Bob Dylan. This yeah, place he There's a choice we're making. Yeah, you know, about four hundred people go in there and be Dylan. <laughs> uh, Eddie Murphy missed his chance to be there. Eddie was at Stevie Wonder's studio recording his single "Party All the Time." Great <laughs> record. Hated what a hit! <laughs> Stevie asked him to come over, but he declined. When he realized that he'd uh, passed it up, he felt like a complete idiot. I can get that. Yeah. Uh, not everybody liked the song. Billy Joel claims they all hated it, but nobody was willing to say so. That's and funny. We Are the World, a huge success, as you know now. It spent four weeks at number one. Uh, one of the better intros in pop music, in my humble opinion. Just Good a one, great, yeah. great dramatic intro. The intro of the song was better than the song itself. The intro created the uh, the largesse of that particular record. Which were I we fighting famine? To. What were we fighting? Fight, Who, world world hunger, I believe it yes, was. Yes, yeah. Yeah. It was uh, it's weird because as big of a hit as it was, you never hear it. Like If you were to listen to the 80s on 8 on Sirius XM, yeah. You would never hear it. They should play it more. They I'd should. Love to. They I'd should. Love to hear it. It's a curio. I mean, with all the great voices in it, it's right. worth hearing. Yeah. It spent four weeks at number one, went quadruple platinum within a month, went on to sell seven million copies, and helped raise sixty three million dollars, which is, uh, is pretty good. Is I don't want to um steer this the wrong way. The and I and I want to be clear here, when I said were we fighting famine, I didn't want to be flip. I clearly understand uh Yeah. As you, as you recall, was, yeah. my father uh, uh, made me stand in a corner uh, one time because uh, he got back from Somalia and um, and he, or is it Ethiopia? Could Somalia. be either country, both yeah. have starvation um, and, issues. And he said, uh, who threw away half this apple? And I, and I was like, maybe it was 10 years old or something like that. And I said, oh, that was me. Like I, I didn't like it. It was a little bitter. And he said... And he made me read all this uh, <laughs> literature about famine. I and he made me man. stand in a corner for like six hours until my knees buckled. It was six, wild. It wasn't six hours. It felt for like forever. But <laughs> my knees buckled. I remember crying yeah. in the living room. And my mom came down and she said, that's enough. Your old man's no, a cool like, guy. Yeah. Yeah. Just to kind of like, uh, I bet you never forgot that lesson, did you? Oh, no. <laughs> That's why I just had to, I just had PTSD from just being flip about famine. Yeah. yeah. And I had to explain to you why I actually care about people starving. Since you know, that day, have you when ever. When a certain young man gets threatened with being kicked off character council because of his recent behavior in school, uh, I like to channel your old man a little bit, and I may have done it last night. Oh. So I'm, uh, I'm all in. Yes, sir. Yeah. Oscar, since that day, have you ever <laughs> eaten an apple? <laughs> All right. Rob. You. Uh, finally, this is not sticky, but I'll just uh, lay it out on you. It's emotional intelligence defined as the ability to perceive and evaluate feelings accurately in ourselves and others. How do you know if you need to work on those skills? Well, if you use any of the following phrases, it might be a sign that you have a low emotional IQ. Uh, this is interesting. I'm not changing. That's number one. <laughs> This is who I am. People have, that have low emotional intelligence are stuck in their ways and refuse to evolve. Instead, try, I want to be open to feedback, even when it's hard to hear. Uh, <laughs> Oscar and I are having a moment right now. Uh, I, uh, number two, I don't care how you feel. If you disregard other people's feelings, you most likely have low emotional intelligence. Try this instead. I'm sorry you're feeling upset. How can I help? That's the. They're giving you. That could also come here. off as condescending. It can't. <laughs> yeah, that really way. can. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Number three. Here's the quote. It's your fault. I feel this way. No, I've, I, I don't say that because I don't believe it, and it's yeah. a horrible thing to say. It if is. you have strong emotional intelligence, you don't blame others for your feelings. Try this instead. I'm feeling emotional right now. Here's why. That's. Yeah, it's just yeah. the way you express. Emotional IQ seems to be about semantics more and more. The more yeah. articles a, a like this, I a read. therapist once told me, um, the emotion is temporary. What you do about it is, is what you should think is about. enduring. Like, is enduring. That's what mm -hmm. it is. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Temporary and then enduring. So if even if Mike, you're mad, are you or the therapist? Or you're sad? No, no. he's he's not my, he was my I've translator. Been to enough therapy. Uh, thank uh, you. you know, my standard one that I've that resonated with me was: you can never get enough of won't, what won't satisfy you. Which yeah. is one of the greatest things ever sent to me. I thought mine I is, didn't uh, have this Big Mac. Mine is uh, finish the apple. <laughs> Number four. <laughs> uh, when you say you're just wrong, 
Uh, that's just totally punting. Emotional yeah, yeah. intelligent people focus more on understanding each other's experience and recognizing nuance. Uh, I have become so much better at nuance uh, because of my relationships politically down here. Yeah. Because I am in such a small minority of people, and uh, they never fail to try to engage me. And so sometimes I, I engage, sometimes I don't. But yeah. I always try to handle it. And yeah. that that you're forced to raise your emotional IQ because you don't get anywhere yeah. if you don't. Uh, you want to try this instead of saying you're just wrong. I want to hear your perspective, even when I don't see things the way you do. Can you help me understand why you're feeling this way? You know, it seems like it's trite, but it's not. I really do believe if you say that to people, uh, it immediately calms the situation down. You know, it really, it only really works for me until I start explaining macroeconomics and what a soft landing is. And then they just, their eyes glaze over and they're like, things are terrible. I said, but they won't be. Yeah. And they won't be because of Bidenomics. Bidenomics. Yes. And and then and then they're like, oh, they have another buzzword. And I'm like, all right, we're not going to fight about it. Let's just drink. <laughs> I will share with you a totally low IQ moment, emotional IQ moment that okay. I had, where it resulted in the biggest conflict in recent memory that I've had politically with somebody. Yes. And it was out on the golf course, and it lit this guy's candle who had a very low emotional IQ. And yes. I said. You are just being totally brainwashed. And it was as though I lit a fuse oh, into his brain. Oh, he oh, yeah. exploded. I mean, it was yep. F you, F you, F mm -hmm. you. And, you know, it's because I completely disrespected him with my response that he wasn't able to think clearly mm -hmm. on his own. So yeah. if you're ever dealing with somebody from a, an opposite political belief system, yeah. if you say they're brainwashed... You're going to light their candle, even though I firmly believe that on both sides we're all brainwashed. We all kind of believe what we believe, and we want to be believing it, and we want to get that ingrained into our souls. I'm not saying that I disagree with my point of view. I'm saying that we reinforce the way we feel more well, than where, we ever have. You know, where well because technology is also allowing for that. Yeah, there is a there is a level of so I'm pulling out uh, every day when I pull out. I'm just gonna, next time I just give you my address. I'm sure it's out there. Um, I see the Ukrainian embassy every effing day when I come to work. Mm -hmm. It is at the corner of M Street and um, 34th. And it, 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 like, it hits me, and I don't talk about it here on the show because we don't want to make it political. We won't be political. I get that. We get that. Sometimes when we have to be, we don't. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, we're not going to ignore certain things, but I'm just like, I can't believe, like this morning, I said, I can't believe we haven't like fully committed to this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This democracy like, saving yeah, endeavor. Yeah, this democracy that, like, because you just, you're just, yeah. it just, it's, it's incredible. You know, it, like it, like what's what's the hold up here? Mm -hmm. And if you're ever talking to somebody about that particular issue, if you're ever dealing with emotional IQ to start with, if you want to raise yours, look a person square in the eye because eye contact is always really, really it important. Is. And you look at them and you say, "I know you are, but what am I?" <laughs> That's what you want to do. That's that's what I do, and it works. <laughs> it works. <laughs> Wasn't that from your therapist, Francis Buxton? <laughs> Francis Buxton from Pee Wee's Bank Adventure. All right, um, we're going to take a break and come back with Divorce Month on the Michael oh. Barry Show. Hey, everybody, done the good thing. Art, fair denizens of the realm, <laughs> attend to this proclamation of import. Verily, the esteemed TMOS store hath undergone a transformation in its stewardship, and lo, she is better than gold. Social interaction, swift dispatch of wares, and the exchange of online gratitude mark this new era. But hark, there is more. Attend to my words and trust me in the day's head, for hats are forthcoming. Keep thy gaze upon TMOSstore.com and spread the gospel of TMOS. Lay claim to thine TMOS Lay claim to thine TMOS regalia and lend thy support to the cherished show. Every purchase ensures the mirth shall endure. TMOSstore.com The font of all things TMOS Official, authentic, and truly awesome. We express gratitude for thy support as we recall our motto, 
Herr Robert of Spiewak. If you don't buy it, we won't sell it. <laughs> Thank you. Perfect. Thank you very much. Good uh, job on a cold read, Mike. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, you, he, the, the man writes for me every day. Uh, it's uh, exciting. You have uh, information on divorce month, is that well, correct? Well, it is today, January 30th. There's only It's the penultimate day. Good word. The penultimate day of January, and we're all still married, so that's good. All right. But uh, January is sometimes called divorce month because it is when lawyers see the biggest uptick in divorce proceedings did you know this i didn't know that i always uh well mine my relationship when did yours happen mine relation uh summer my, divorces or spring uh, oh it's my, so nice in the summer i would wrap <laughs> it up at the beginning of the summer but my <laughs> my my real knowledge of the circumstances yeah. uh was right around uh the thanksgiving holiday <laughs> uh, a lot of pressure around the holidays do you think that added to it I don't know. Okay. Yeah, there's um, <laughs> uh, from 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 a uh, from a man who's still married and has not gone through his first divorce, which right. I hope not to ever. Right. Um, is in my previous breakups, there was a decision made around the holidays early on in my mind, not even fiscally warranted, but more like. Do I want to deal with this for one more Christmas? Or do I have the heart to do this before Christmas? Do you have the guts so, to do it before Do Christmas? I have the guts? I'm sorry, not the heart. The guts, yeah. Yeah. right? To, to, so, to pull, this, pull the Band-Aid to, off. Yeah. yeah. No. And mm, if you look at my past relationships, they happened like right around the holidays. And I remember, I remember explaining to my niece and nephew through two breakups when they were like asking about <laughs> Auntie so-and-so. Oh, dear. Like, auntie, Tia. <laughs> Look, I think that this would be natural because that we are getting into Europe. right now, uh, January, February, the doldrums, and yeah. throw it into my world where uh, probably my most painful—they were both painful. What? What am I talking about? But my most painful loss was losing my father, and yeah. that happened at at Super Bowl time, beginning of yeah. February, and I always feel as though. Not only did that was I going through that in my life, but it was also it's such a meh time, horrible. It re, it really is. It's it really is. but it, but you, you you don't like you don't just roll into a divorce like you have to plan this out. And this well, popular it's funny you age, should bring right? this up, Oscar. Uh, mm -hmm. I will say that there is a twenty five percent spike in divorces in the month of January, and these are some warning signs you can look at to find out whether or not your partner is considering a divorce. Red alert. Red alert. Red, red alert. alert. Red alert. Three red flags. First of all, you notice that their spending habits change. Lawyers have something called spousal support analysis to figure out alimony, especially if one person brings in most of the money. So with that in mind, their needs if their client needs support, they might tell them to go out and shop more so it looks like their lifestyle is what they've become account accustomed to. So if oh, you see a spike God. in spending, they could be planning the divorce. That is terrifying. Isn't it horrifying? Yeah. I just had oh a flashback. My God. Oh, really? <laughs> well, yeah. I told the story it's... about going to a marriage counselor and having the yeah. marriage counselor uh, in one of the fights... Uh, you know, it was the so many of these fights probably are the same where you fight with your spouse. You know, I'm not going to give you anything if you want to get out of this, like that. And then that's brought to the counselor who was seeing us both separately. And uh, and it, you know, I, I probably shouldn't be talking about any of this. All right, but, just uh, say it. I, we'll bleep it out. It's right. Tell, tell us. We'll bleep it out because the, the opportunity to speak to someone legally was presented to my spouse by. The therapist. Oh, yeah. yeah. So they basically said, hey, it's time. Talk to your no. own counsel. They basically said, if you're really concerned about this, maybe you should talk to somebody. I'm like, you, you counsel people. You are yeah. a marriage counselor trying to get people. And you, you have business cards of family law attorneys that you hand out? With a referral rate? Yeah. <laughs> what? I bet there was a referral the rate. F. Yes. <laughs> so watch Never out. Never forget that, all right? Watch out for the Hi Careful now. Um, also, if your spouse is getting a makeover or suddenly hits the gym more, 
could be a sign of infidelity or getting ready to jump back into the dating pool. Yeah, yeah. I see Shannon working out a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and also, this mm. is a good one. If all of a sudden your spouse stops nagging you, that means that, you know what, they don't care anymore because they've given up and they're ready to start yeah, on another I'm relationship. Right. I'm okay on that one. Yeah, me too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Those are the red flags you want to watch What's nagging? For. Nagging is like uh, pestering you, bothering no, you. No, I know what that is. It was more of a joke. Yeah. We just don't talk. Oh. <laughs> I'm in the... Uh... She just goes and works out for her new husband. That's right, yeah. <laughs> and increases her spending. Yeah. I'm sitting there on the, the couch uh, the other day, and Carla walks by, and I'm like, hey, uh, can you do me a favor? I, and I open my mouth, and she goes, no. And she just keeps walking. <laughs> Aww. Happy January, Mike. Happy divorce month. That's exciting. Uh, we will take a break. And uh, nepotism is always a very interesting subject because you never know, uh, you know, whether someone's getting where they're getting uh, on merit or otherwise. But we're yeah. going to talk. Uh, it's nepo babies, right, Oscar? Yes. yes. Nepo Babies, coming up next right here on the Mike O'Mara Show. Whoa, 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 whoa. That Latin music can mean only one thing, ladies and gentlemen, and that is it's time for Legacy Box. Yay! Excuse me. What's on your to-do list for 2024? You probably want to tackle that ancient box of treasured videotapes and photos that you've been meaning to preserve but you weren't sure where to start. Legacy Box makes it so easy. Simply send in your Legacy Box filled with camcorder tapes, film reels, and pictures. Then get back digital copies that can be easily enjoyed, shared, and organized. It's like magic. And by going to LegacyBox.com slash TMOS, you can enjoy 50% off when you get started with Legacy Box today. We've all used Legacy Box. We all love it. It's like a time machine that takes you back, and it lasts forever. After 10 years in business, Legacy Box is the world's largest digitizer. And it's all done right here in the USA. Be a hero by rescuing your family's most cherished memories that haven't been watched or enjoyed in years. Go to LegacyBox.com slash TMOS. Save 50%. Buy today. Send it in when you're ready. Just go to LegacyBox.com slash TMOS. And we thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Just to clarify, is this the flip side or is no, this? No, no. This is okay. Nepo Babies. Okay, okay. I just want to make sure. Yeah, we're just running late. Break. We're running okay, super late. Okay, got it. So we got, got time it. to talk about great. Nepo Babies really quickly. So here. I have five minutes. You have five yeah. minutes. Absolutely. Okay, great. I just wanted to, I should probably know the clock more because it's in front of me right That's now. That's okay. As I just no texted Mike. No problem um, at all. Quit so, nagging. Quick nag. Quit nagging. Um, <laughs> we'll throw up. Don't throw up. <laughs> Don't throw that's up. That's the oh, fourth. Fine. That's the fourth hold, red hold flag it. for divorce. There's, there's, He's there's, vomiting there's, all, there's, all there's, the time. Yeah. Go ahead. The ne- uh, a nepo baby for those that are not in the know is it just it's a short term for a nepotism baby. Um, I am not talking about these supermodels that uh, essentially marry a supermodel or an actor and then become supermodels later in life. That's that that's your traditional, I guess. Nepo baby or reality stars that then make reality stars that grow up to be reality stars. Yeah, Nepo baby. Yes, correct, yeah, correct. Correct. Right. I'm talking about the office Nepo baby. Okay. Um, I saw, and this is a, this is a, a sheer opinion piece, but then backed up by other reporters saying, "Oh, that does make sense," and I want to get your take on it. Greatest example of Nepo babies, Oscar, would be uh, you know uh, Uday and Kuse would be the Trump boys. Right, Donald Jr. Yeah. and yes, uh, yes. and uh, yes. Tito Trump. Yeah, yes, yes, right. yes. Well, <laughs> I'm I'm happy you mentioned the office work. Right. The world of 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 the opportunities for nepotism, that world has completely changed because of the pandemic. Really, if you recall, when we were younger, uh, um, and maybe you probably be, uh, each of us had our own experiences, but I remember that. There were certain kids in my school that would have these like surreal internships in high school Mm -hmm. and then in college. I was like, how did that happen? Like, I was excited to be at the Department of Labor uh, (laughs) junior year, right? Yeah. Uh, And, but they were, they'd been doing this since they were in high school. They had like this resume. uh, A-list internships. Yeah, A-list internships. Right. And uh, whether it was at Morgan Stanley or like whatever it was. And then you dig a little further and you're like, oh, their father is the vice president of Morgan Stanley. Yeah. That's how you get, um, and that's, and that type of internship and that, that, um, I guess that experience and that opportunity has 
decreased by over 50% because a lot of these interactions that are done in the office, there is no more office to do in. So having so, a body around to do certain beyond the on-campus work doesn't exist anymore. The low-level stuff doesn't uh, exist as Well, much. you can't even fake, like, fake an internship now because right. the interns actually have to do work because it's being quantified because it's remote. And they mm. have to, and a lot of times being there is important too, and it doesn't work the same way as being remote, right? Correct. So to, to pull in your kid that probably, you know, and I'm not saying your kid, I'm saying for anybody's kid, a kid. that maybe is kind of just trying to figure out what they want to do and may give back roughly 50% or even uh, 25% of what's being invested in them in time and attention. That no longer can exist because there's such granular oversight on these remote workers that it would be a remote internship that then would have some sort of backlash on the executive that's looking for this internship. Is it because more people wow. would be aware of the nepotism uh, yes. in, an online, mm -hmm. in an online yes. structure? They can't yep. just lurk oh. in the shadows running cable or running boards. Right. Or smoking oh, or, uh, a dube out in uh, the alley, you know, or, 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 with, or, or, with, with, the, with the slacker guy from the third floor, you know. Or just <laughs> grabbing lunch, learning about, you know, how to uh, to make a VPN uh, at home so the parents don't know they're using the Internet. You know, it's like. Yeah. You know, yeah, well, that's a, it, I, in some ways, I think that's a good thing. Right? It's refreshing. I do not yeah. care. I've never cared for uh, nepotism. I don't like it. Uh, it seems to result in a thing. However, I will say this about a particular industry, and uh, one that I know because I've uh, interacted with many people in these industries. There are multiple, multiple successful automobile dealership chains around the good old United States. Yes. And some of these chains, a lot of them in Washington, D.C., these guys are sun makers. They breed male heirs. Yeah. And there's a hierarchy for some of these yeah. companies where the older brother retires young, then it's turned over to the next brother, then it's turned, and then the next but brother that's, is that's the legacy. general manager. It's amazing. I, I, the, the, the heir and the parent to more Cadillac was in the class next to me. Uh, yep. right, right, right behind, right behind me, um, at the Robert H. Smith School of Business, and I remember he was talking about electrifying the fleet yep. years before it was even public. Yeah, mm -hmm. and well, he stepped up, and I'm not to say these guys don't work their asses off, but it's a pretty sweet little deal to, there to, are to go into the family business. Yes, all, oh, all I know about that, especially level. in the Irish families and your yes. Sheehy's. You know what I mean? <laughs> there you go. Well, really, okay. I know. That's why you get what a guy. What about the Fitzgerald? He's holding on for it. He's not letting anybody go. <laughs> not sure what the heirs are, but I think there was the Sheehy. How about Gardner Britt, who had like yeah. 17 sons? You yeah. know? I mean, oh, really. Well, the, the, who's, is it Lindsay Coons? No, it's sure. Crystal oh, Coons. Crystal, Crystal Coons. Coons. But the Coons yes. family is huge as well. The boys couldn't step yeah. up. Yeah. She took over. Yeah. Well, yeah. if yeah. it weren't for should. nepotism, I know you guys are against it, <laughs> but if it weren't for up. nepotism, I wouldn't have gotten a job at Safeway. Your mother oh, got Rob. you in Safeway. <laughs> a wonderful example of that. You couldn't fake it at Safeway. She was sleeping with the store manager. <laughs> hey! Hey! Hey, that's my mother! Oh, man. It the, took Rob like true a... True or untrue? <laughs> it took Rob... I didn't like, work at his store. Uh, <laughs> it took Rob a week, a week to stop asking permission to go take a leak. That's what it was. With the, the, I just turned that into the Shawshank Redemption. I don't know whether to... I got to. I even got to ask permission to make water. Uh, anyway, that's it. Uh, yeah, nepotism. Well, good. I'm glad it's breaking up. Higher oversight. Uh, we will take a break. Come back with the flip side. You, ladies and gentlemen, are listening to the Michael Bear. Keep it down. <laughs> do you want to lose? <laughs> oh dear. Oh. Twenty one percent of your weight. Perfect time. I do. Don't eat a seven hundred and eighty pound burger before the show even starts. I've lost over sixty pounds. Seventy. So, you I'm know sorry. It's Seventy 70. pounds, and I'm excited to share it with you. The DermGlowSkin.com is now your one-stop shop for finally getting control of your weight problem. All you have to do is click the weight loss button at DermGlowSkin.com, take the quiz, and see if you qualify. Today, uh, look for your social media. We're going to have an unboxing where I uh, got my new supply, and I'm going to show you what it looks like, and I'm going to show you how it works. And uh, cool. Not the uh, injection part. We uh, I think we might have done that already. I don't even remember. But I'll show you what the packaging looks like and how they send this to you, and it's really cool to watch. So check that out. 
that out. Uh, it's real easy. Take a quiz. If you qualify, doctor writes your prescription. The pharmacy fills it. Your weight loss medication will be shipped directly to your house. If you're sick of waiting for your meds because of low or out of stock, DermGlow will connect you with a doctor that is fully supplied. No more waiting for you. It's changed my life. I've lost so much weight that I am currently playing hide-and-seek with my son. The game started four days ago. I'm talking thin, Arthur. Go ahead, get excited, and do it all online right now at DermGlowSkin.com. If you struggled with weight for too long, click the weight loss button and begin the best journey of your life. Make 2024 the year you finally reach your goal. With DermGlow, you can do it. Hello. That was my Nepo baby. <laughs> what time is it? The flip side. Oh, sometimes I'm just excited to play a tape. I love coming in with this. David Letterman has been making appearances on something that they call on YouTube, on the Letterman channel, The Barbara Gaines Show. But it's uh, his old producer, Barbara Gaines, and it's normally an excuse for him to get on with Paul. And uh, he actually did a pro Taylor Swift video that is gaining some traction, and it's extraordinarily funny. And watching it, he makes a lot of good points, but it also reminds you, we miss you, Dave. Mm-hmm. Taylor Swift, I don't think in the history of show business, in the history of popular culture, we've ever witnessed anything like this. Tremendous. She fills stadiums around the world and puts on a three-hour show. Now, we live in a world now where all we hear is good nonsense and ugliness. And the nonsense can't be more nonsensical. And the ugliness, God hopes it can't get any uglier. But that's all we hear. That's all we hear. So now, here's Taylor Swift, who is a glowing bright light of goodness in the world and she starts dating uh kelsey Grammer, and people no that's go- not true what kelsey Grammer? yes and yeah <laughs> an interesting parent and go people ahead. go crazy and the, the kelsey, kelsey Grammer, Grammer people say oh no 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 don't bother us we're all caught up in football we don't want taylor in football and the taylor swift people the swifties are saying oh we don't want a footballer in here with kelsey Grammer." and i'm saying Huh? Travis Kelsey. Right. Travis Kelsey. <laughs> and I say to both camps, <laughs> Old this is such a lovely thing. Shut up. Yep. It's good for the footballers. Yeah. It's good for Taylor Swift. And it's something positive and happy for the world. And also politically, Taylor Swift is a huge force and I think just wants to see people do the right thing. So God bless Taylor Swift and Kelsey Grammer. That's Bless all I have. Kelsey had. Grammer. Hmm? <laughs> Taylor Swift, I don't think in the history. That's, <laughs> That's just so Dave. Isn't it wonderful, so though? Dave. Yeah, it's great. Great. Fantastic. Throwback. And also Throwback the, to what he used to do. Even <laughs> that Paul is off camera, Paul says, it's a very curious pairing. <laughs> yeah, like, that's why the formula works. It's so, still making so me laugh. Yeah. I love that. Um, let's close with this. Uh, Dateline Denver. Uh, you order a Domino's uh, pizza and you think that's the worst thing that's going to happen to you in a day, right? No. This Domino's pizza guy has got himself a scam. He's out there stealing things in 30 minutes or less surveillance video obtained by Fox 31. You can see a pizza delivery driver walking around apartments in the 900 block of Emerson Street. About four minutes later, he can be seen stuffing a package inside a pizza carrier before leaving and walking away. Just like trying to figure out what's going on. Anthony Torres was shocked to look back on his footage the next day to find his package swiped. It made me very nervous and kind of tell that he was truly trying to see what else was available. We've had other incidences here where things weren't clear on the camera, but this was pretty clear. The package stolen worth a little more than a hundred dollars. It, it, it's Does everybody something talk like that out in this part of the world? What's replaced? going on? I don't know. But that that's not the the issue. The issue, Mike, is the fact that uh, he was able to keep that package warm because he put it in his pizza carrier. Did so they ask was, the pizza delivery guy that was stealing the thing that, what his opinion was? That, I've made a very big mistake. <laughs> yeah. Well, Mike, we've had a lot of incidences. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to have an incident. I'm going to have an incident in about five minutes. We've got a great, great, great burger. The, uh, double Big Mac. Check it out. Uh, we'll see you next time. Brand new episode tomorrow on the Mike O'Mara Show. Thank you for all your support. For Rob Spiewak and Oscar Santana, this is Mike O'Mara saying, happy eating, everyone. So long, everybody. <laughs> it's a weird pairing. Ciao, ciao. Want more? Make sure you check out the Mike O'Mara Bonus Show. Get it at MikeOMaraShow.com. Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment. That's it. That's all you get from me up here, you candy-ass clown. Come on, bitch. Playoffs? Don't talk.
talk about? Playoffs? You kidding me? Playoffs? Where's the money? <laughs>